Ladies and gentlemen, this podcast is brought to you by Five Star Junk Removal. Cleaning out the house, as you guys know, can be a mess. Have you ever walked into your garage and really looked around and you start noticing, damn, there's a bunch of shit everywhere. Where am I going to get rid of all this crap? Well, why stress? Call the guys over there at Five Star Drunk Removal and they will get rid of the clutter and do all the heavy lifting so you can focus on your latest project. They handle debris removal, furniture delivery, project tackling, and so much more. Contact Alonzo at 805-769-7796. That's 805-769-7796. Or visit them at their website at 5 star junk removal.com that's 5 star junk removal.com that's the letter that's the number 5 i v e s t a r j u n k r e m o v a l it's 5 star junk removal.com and use promo code jr time that's promo code jr time to give $10 off of your first load they serve all of the San Luis Obispo County Santa Maria and all the way up to King City California Valley as well as the rural areas link in the description box and as always Enjoy the show. Shut up and sit down. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back with another episode of JR Time. Didn't post last week, so apologies for that. Just uh, getting crazy, man. Just trying to do taxes, and taxes are here. And you know, taxes aren't always positive for some people. So, <laughs> so they definitely weren't for me this year. So it is what it is, fam. You know, just uh, gotta do what you gotta do. But just be careful, man. There've been a lot of changes that they added recently with the tax bracketing. So some people might fall under different categories that they did not fall in last year. Um, so I think that's going to be a shock to a lot of people. But hey, man, what can we do under the current administration? They're kind of moving some shit around and uh, doing some sneaky little shit. Um, I know. Fuck. I know I was talking to, you know, people on various different spectrums about, you know, energy prices and energy prices have quadrupled, according to some. Uh, and they're noticing it huge on their utilities. But it sucks, man, because I know they are encouraging us to go green. But it's like the smaller people, you know, who are stuck between that particular income, you know, people who are stuck uh, are making between 65 and and $85,000 or so, you know, you would think that that's pretty good. But when you have kids and you have to pay gas and then you have to buy all the expensive groceries and then in this area, you cannot find anything for under $2,100. There, my wife was telling me there is a, there's a house in our neighborhood that only has two bedrooms or somewhere around our neighborhood that the house is brand new, built in 2015 or so. Two bedroom, two bath, two and a half bathrooms or something like that. $2,600 a month. I mean, are you kidding me, man? Like, that's ridiculous. Um, that's a lot better than an apartment, but I mean, come on. I mean, $2,600, man. Like, come on. And then you get, and then when you have kids on top of that, that's not counting utilities and every other, and any other bills you might have. Man, it's ridiculous. It's, it's crazy. Anyways, it's kind of hard to survive in this area right now, but you know, it is what it is. It's California. It's beautiful. And, uh, we pay for what we get, honestly, but, um, I don't know if it's fucking worth it anymore because I don't know. Back then you say, oh, man, we got the beaches. Oh, we got the desert. Oh, we got, you know, forest. We got it all. We really do. We got snow. I mean, you can go anywhere in California and get what you're looking for. Absolutely. But I don't know if it's starting to sound so worth it anymore, to be honest. But we'll see what happens, you know. But anyways, I was back on the podcast and I wanted to talk to you guys. <laughs> And uh, I don't have a lot of listeners yet, but hopefully we can get there with time. But the ones that do listen, I was wondering what you guys thought about us receiving our first radio signal that came from space. I don't know if you guys have saw, have, have looked it up or even heard about this shit. So it was crazy. I saw <coughs> excuse me, a bunch of different <coughs> articles. <coughs> God damn, I'm getting too excited, yo. <coughs> damn, boy. Uh, 
I saw a bunch of different articles I was trying to compare, and it looks like y'all know me. I'm crazy about the space shit. If you know me, I'm crazy about space, man. I love it. Um, but it was crazy that they said that they had finally shared out to the public that there was a source of radio signal that came from 9 billion light years away. When I saw that, I mean, there's a lot of people who speculate and what I'm gathering from all this research is that, you know, there, it's a, it's such a huge number, honestly, that's so hard to understand, but that was so long ago, dude, that our solar system hadn't even been materialized yet. So it's so weird when you think about it that way. And it kind of, for some people, it kind of shrouds, you know, it kind of shrouds that the possibility of life might be out there. But no, it's not the best way to think about it. Because the simple fact that, that you know, it doesn't matter if there is, you know, another planet out there that can sustain life. I mean, what if there is another planet that did have life or there was, there is life right now? It's hard to say, right? Because of the way that time travels. But just the simple fact that there could have been is a big, big, big notion to me that gets me excited and fucking kind of trips me out and gives me this, this interesting feeling of anxiety but it's not in a negative way it's almost like in an interested way but you know and you know there's a bunch of stuff that um that that can come from this i mean this this could be one of the things that could kind of you know kind of shed light on how our universe our universe is formed dude i mean i don't understand how sometimes people can i think i've talked about this before it's kind of crazy i don't understand how people can just kind of go about their days not really caring about you know how we got here and how the universe is formed like you know i mean you don't have to of course we're both fucking free will but it's kind of interesting you don't really want to like that if that shit don't interest people like that's a trip to me i don't know a short attention span maybe but anyways it was crazy because the radio frequency was picked up by a satellite in india and uh fuck by some crazy ass distant galaxy it was like sdssj fucking zero some bullshit or something crazy ass long number look it up on google i'm sure you can find it um it was located 8.8 8, uh, billion light years from earth so that's a shit ton that's that's a, that's a, that's, a, that's far away as hell man um but uh, what that means basically is the signal was emitted um when our 13.8 billion old universe was about a third of its age. So that's basically what it means, just to put it in layman's terms. Um, it's difficult to understand because the initial thing, obviously, is to get excited about alien life, like I said. But I don't know. There's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of different things that, that a lot of scientists are saying and a lot of reports are saying, and they're kind of like, pushing it off and kind of saying, you know, it could be gaseous hydrogen or perhaps it could be like a, an emission form from a dying star. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different things I was reading, you know, uh, they're, they're kind of what it seems to me, what all these articles have in common is that they're kind of blaming it on gaseous hy uh, hydrogen, which is, you know, whatever the possibility, but we why haven't we gotten these uh quote unquote gaseous hydrogen blasts before? Why is this the first time? And then, you know I know they say that, oh, it's because of the traveling, you know, the time traveling that it took it this far for it to reach, but does that mean we're gonna be getting more pings? Does that mean we're gonna be getting more of those or what? But the reason they believe it was a gaseous hydrogen blast is because it comes from the hydrogen line. Um and the hydrogen line is a uh, is emitted. It's like a okay. Well, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember because I did a bunch of research on this shit because I wanted to sit here and know what I was talking about, right? But the hydrogen line is like a basically what neutral hydrogen's atoms are. And up until now, that signal that was associated with the regular transmissions were all on that it's a thing called the 21 centimeter line. And you guys could look this shit up, bro. Like you know what I mean? I ain't no fucking I ain't no Neil deGrasse Tyson. I just do my homework, motherfuckers. <laughs> I do my homework. And um, they noticed they kind of, it was, uh, anyways, they were on the 21 centimeter line. And they noticed that there was a change in the formation or in the pattern almost. And that's how they picked it up. So, they believe that they were able to pick it up because it was, it, they think that it was maybe deflected by another galaxy. 
that was located kind of between, you know, where the signal was picked up and where the, and between the telescope in India. So there was a lot of there was a lot of researchers saying that the results will show if there is potential, you know, for possibly probing that place and seeing how that how that twines in with the cosmic evolution of stars and galaxies. I mean, it's kind of interesting. I mean, they can do that. You know, I'm we're so advanced now. We have technology that can do that shit. I believe though. I mean, shit, we have like low frequency stuff we can definitely use to try to, you know, get a more clearer understanding on why that is, but you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting thing, man. There's a lot of things happening in the astro world for sure. I mean, shit, dude. I know there's like a there was a comment that you're going to be able to see really bright in the sky here um, today. Mo- it'll be the most brightest tomorrow, um, and it hasn't been here in over 50 years. But it's kind of interesting. I mean, that one you might want to go like for us here in our area, Paso Robles and Barney Schwartz up at the top, uh, at the top level. That would be a perfect place to go to kind of take a look at it. Uh, it's better to get some binoculars and maybe a telescope if you're lucky. But that is definitely something that's not going to be. Um, it's not going to happen a lot, guys. I mean, that one I would definitely, definitely not pass up because. I don't know. I don't. I don't think that kind of she should pass it, pass it up. Like it's like the Haley's comment, man. People who were lucky enough to see Haley's comment, and that that shit was cool as hell. Um, I hope I get to see it. Um, There's a famous question by Alan on the Hangover. When's when's the next Haley's comment? Let's let's look that shit up real quick. So next Haley's comment is gonna be on July twenty eighth, twenty sixty one, bro. Day before my birthday. Oh shit. So hopefully I'm my ass is still alive by then. Um, God damn, that's a long time from now, boy. I don't know if fuck. I don't even know <laughs> if I'm gonna be alive for that. But hopefully that's uh, the reason it will not appear. So this is what this shit says, and this is coming from homework.study.com. Haley's comet is not due back in 2022. Oh, no shit. It is due back in 2061 and will be visible in July and August. The reason it will not appear in 2022 is that the comet has an orbital period of 660,000 hours, which is approximately 75 to 76 years. And at the last Halley's Comet was 1986. So Halley was last seen in the Earth's skies in 1986 and was met in space by an international fleet of spacecraft. It will return in 2061, blah, blah, blah. Interesting. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting, dude. Like, I don't understand, you know, um, why certain people don't kind of think that shit's amazing. I mean, dude, like, I, I finally met, actually, somebody who believes space is fake. That shit's crazy. I never thought I would I never thought I would have an actual conversation with somebody thinking that space is fake. Uh, boy, let me tell you. I don't know. To each their own. But I mean, holy crap, dude. I, I've never. It's so crazy because you try not to be a dick, right? Because people people can believe what they want, right? Everybody can believe exactly what they want. And you don't, you kind of don't want to, you know, for lack of a better term, you don't want to be a dick. But you hear these people's positions, right? It seems like that's a lot of people who can't even talk these days, right? And they just fucking fight each other and nobody can get any points across and, and all that. So, so you know, I try listening to this person and I try to hear out, hear them out and hear what they have to say. Good Lord, dude. It is the most... I don't want to say stupid, but it's just like... <laughs> it's, it's crazy, man. It's so crazy to hear somebody... Start saying, you know, their reasoning for, I mean, their reasoning for why space is fake. And it's funny, too, because when you ask them, okay, so this, why is space fake and why, and why, well, explain the moon then. Well, and they say, well, you know, they, they, that we can be in a firmament. And it's like, bro, are you serious? You believe that we're in a firmament? That's super interesting that you think that. Well, give me your basis for thinking that. And they just start saying all this baloney and all this garbage, and you know it's funny because I've always I've, I've always uh, 
when I was a kid, um, you know, I had asked my dad, but it was just a kid question. You know, I had asked him if the stars were real. My dad's a big astronomy guy, but I, I don't know how he took it, but he was like, oh, yeah, you know, of course the stars are real, son. It's like, don't be a fucking moron. And then he's like, let me show you how. He's like, do you see that line in the sky? And um, I want to say it was in the constellation of, um, fuck, I forgot. He explained it to me, bro. Like, I only, I, I'm interested in like black holes and wormholes and things like that. And fucking, you know, I was really into the James Webb Space, the James Webb Space Telescope and things like that. But like, as far as knowing the constellations, I, I really don't know it. But um, this was in November um, when I was a kid. So, uh, what constellations are on somewhere up in November? I think it was in around Taurus, where the th- there. And, and if you if you saw what I was talking about, you'd be like, "Oh shit, I know what you're talking about." Honestly, and it's like it has to be Taurus, guys. Honestly, because Taurus is in the northern hemisphere, which is where we're at. But Anyways, Taurus and Gemini are close in this area overhead. But anyways, so it's crazy because the best way I can describe it, right, it looks like a K. And my dad was like, oh, take a look up at the sky. See those three stars with those two and the one that makes it look a big K? I was like, yeah, okay. Right now, you see it directly up in the sky. And then when you're looking at it, what would it be? What you see it like between east and south, right? See it east and south? Okay, perfectly centered right there, okay? I said, okay. He goes, next, give it about five months, and that K is going to be closer to the southwest, and it's going to make its, and it's gonna make its, its, its trip around, and then closer enough, well, it's going to be around, ah, fuck, dude, I'm so sorry, because I'm doing my fucking compassing. Right, so it, either that goes be closer to the southwest, and then uh, northwest, and then, and then it does its trip around because we do our three hundred and sixty five days around the sun, and that's how he kind of taught me that it's like, nah, man, like space is fucking real. Like you look at that star, that fucking K is not gonna be there at the same time every day, every year. It's going to change with the seasons. That's why we have our changing seasons because we go furthest away from the sun and we come closer to it. And it's just so crazy that there's like that shit was nuts, bro. Like I was like losing brain cells, to be honest, sitting there and I already fucking have low brain cells already as it is. Like I don't need to lose any more hearing people's pitches on that. But, you know, I just try to be it, 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 it is good to open up the lines of communication and have an open dialogue to try to understand why certain people think the way that they do. You know, it's like, it's always best like that, man. Like you see those, po- like a lot of people on their podcasts, all they do is they invite people they like and kind of keep it to the, to a minimum of, uh, of inviting guests on. But honestly, I, I don't, I don't know. Is there certain people that you can invite on a podcast? They're just going to argue with you and maybe, piss you off and do that but i mean it's like not a bad idea to get people that you don't agree on to try to find common ground and maybe be surprised on some shit you do agree on but anyway it was kind of interesting um it it was it was something that i really wanted to talk about because uh it's a fucking i don't know man the whole i haven't done a space podcast in a minute and it was something that was crazy too especially you know With that comet that's going to be in the sky. It's going to be luminous for about two to three weeks. So you'll be able to see it in the sky. But it's it's supposed to be. um, It's supposed to be in our sky since the first time since the Stone Age. So it's really something you don't want to miss guys. Honestly I don't see why you would want to. But hey the space shit ain't for everybody. But it's interesting because I don't know like. It's, have you guys seen that movie, Don't Look Up, on Netflix? It's so crazy, huh? It's like we don't really know when an asteroid or a comet would hit us. And I I really don't think the government would relay that fucking information to us. I mean, people, you know, it's like there's been certain, you know, riots and certain protests. And people start looting the fuck out of places by that kind of shit because they're outraged. Can you imagine if they fucking if can you imagine if Sleepy Joe got on TV 
and mustered his sentences out and said that, you know, there's a fucking asteroid or a comet coming to plummeting the Earth. I, I don't know, man. I, I really don't believe that the government is okay with telling us that shit. I, I really don't think so. I, I really don't think that they would tell us. I think they would tell us when there's not enough time left and they have confirmed already that we're fucked. But I, I don't think they'd tell us. But it's kind of interesting that this is the first time that we're seeing this comet since the Stone Age. Um, and it will, it was recently discovered, too. But it's the first time in over 50,000 years, dude. The last time, like I'm saying, it was visible was during the Stone Age. Um, and it apparently was discovered like in some early, sometime in early March. Um, and they had, a they had a survey camera. Um, we have a, we have a planetary here in San Diego. I forgot what it's called, but it's in San Diego County. But anyway, they said that it was going to make its closest approach on the sun. Uh, it was close, blah, 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 closest approach on the sun on January 12th. Right. But, um, I haven't seen it yet, to be honest, but I was trying to take, uh, my son and maybe my daughter on Friday, but I don't know how visible it'll be on Friday um, to Barney Schwartz and kind of go up there and see if we can look at it. But um, it, it's going to be interesting, man. It's they, they That's the thing, though, that gets kind of creepy to me. It's like they always try to make you feel secure in these situations, and you can tell that it's like they don't want people freaking out because, like, let me pull it up here. Like, let me see. Give me one second. Let me pull this up. Okay, I don't really like CNN reporting, but we'll use this one for now. Um, like, check this uh, paragraph out. Even during its closest approach, the comet will still be more than 100 times the moon distance away from Earth, according to Earth's sky. So, it's always like they always got to make us aware that it's it's okay. It's not a big deal. Um, well, fuck it. Let's see what it says. As the comet nears Earth, observers will be able to spot it as a faint green smudge near the bright star Pol uh, Polaris, also called the North Star. Comet reflects different colors of light due to their current positions in orbit and chemical compositions. Early morning skies, once the moon has set after midnight for those in the northern hemisphere, are optimal for viewing the comet. The space object will be more difficult to see those to those in the southern hemisphere. Depending on its brightness, C slash 2022 E3 may even be visible to the unaided eye in dark skies, but binoculars or a telescope will make the comet easier to see. There you go, fuckers. The comet can be distinguished from stars by its streaking tails of dust, but yada, the comma's an the com the comma's an envelope, but after passing Earth, the comet will make its closest approach of Mars on February 10th. So it's gonna go to Mars after that. Okay, well, yeah, there you go. It's gonna be interesting. There's a comment here, and then let that be known, and then next thing you know, boom, has the earth that was so calm. Fuck. And it was funny too. Because when I was asking that one person, like, so what do you think? What do you think happens? Um, do you wh what are the stars? And explain to me what the stars are. Well, then they said that it was uh, special effects of the firmament, and I'm like, are you fucking serious? So, and then there's people that believe this is a simulation. So they believe that the fir that the firmament is part of the simulation, and that the stars are part of the simulation, like. I don't know, man, but like apparently that's like a hip thing to think. There are so many people that believe in the simulation theory. I, I don't know. It seems too, it seems too far fetched for me. It seems like too fake to be, but who knows? I mean, people can grab the multiverse theory and say, well, that shit sounds fake too. And it might. Um, it was crazy. I think Neil deGrasse Tyson was. Was it with Theo Vaughn when he did this past weekend? I'm not sure, but he was talking about that they're further confirming that the multiverse uh, theory almost is becoming credible. Uh, that shit, I got to look up. But can you imagine, dude, if there is a multiverse like that means that somebody out there is out there right now doing the exact same thing you're doing just in a different or, or just just. How does it work that there's another person like you doing the exact same thing as you or the exact same person as you just doing different choices or something like that. But there's there, there's a 
there's a there's a there's another one of you or something but anyways so what is the multiverse theory so the multiverse theory apparently is a hypothetical collection of potentially diverse observable universes and i'm reading this off each of which would comprise everything that is experimentally accessible by a connected community of observers the observable known universe which is accessible to telescopes is about 90 billion light years across. So, what did Neil deGrasse Tyson said? He said that there has a solid and wise thesis about the universe. He claimed that he wanted to classify celestial objects in specific groups according to their features. He has differentiated planets from other things such as enormous balls of gas. Tyson is responsible for disqualifying Pluto as a planet. Well, that doesn't really help us, huh? Doesn't really help us on what he thinks about the multiverse but i know that uh i know that he was on a podcast recently talking about how the james wave space telescope is kind of helping us find out whether or not uh there is a multiverse or making 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 it more plausible that the multiverse is a thing i'll try to find the video and then link it in my description box below but any hooser guys, I mean, there was a good DAZN card recently unboxing Alexis Rocha, completely dismantled his opponent, and then there is going to be a UFC card this week, so I will definitely be doing a UFC, um, I will be doing a Friday Fight Talk podcast, um, and then this, uh, yes, yeah, this Saturday, Saturday, February 4th, it's the Derek Lewis card, he's fighting Sergey Spivak, so, I'll definitely be who oh, Tiberi is fighting on there. Ooh, goddamn. And the preliminary. Oh, come on, baby. Hell yeah. Lee Jing Young. I love that guy. Okay, so we'll be talking about this shit. But anyways, guys. Yeah, just wanted to come and check in. Kind of give you guys a little space podcast. Um, I love doing the space ones, but I know those are probably boring for some. And then to be completely honest, guys, I'm not a fucking expert. I mean, I know more than the average schmo. And if you ask me questions, I think you'd be surprised about how much I know. But as far as like leading a one hour podcast, no, I can't fucking do that. Or a 30 minute, 45 minute podcast about space. Absolutely not. Um, it, it's kind of it's kind of a trip, but. I don't know. I thought you guys would like that shit about the uh, comments and and uh, about the comet nearing Earth and then the re- reaching the signal um, that we recently got that they got in India. I mean, that's important, guys. I mean, if you sit there and think about it, what what is the craziest thing that would um, that would get you guys? To really kind of fall into space, to get to get into space things, because yeah, I would imagine that everybody's got to sit there and at least think like, are we really fucking alone in this planet? No, excuse me, are we really alone in this fucking galaxy? Just our galaxy, just the Milky Way, because there's thousands and thousands and thousands of fucking galaxies in the universe. Right? And who knows, even if it's a universe, there could be a multiverse. We don't know. But there's a quote, and I forgot who quoted this. And they said, if we're alone in this planet, that's just as scary as there being others in another planet. Whether we're alone, whether we're alone or or not, both answers are some or or similar, scary or some shit like that. But I don't know. That shit don't scare me. If anything, it gets me really excited. Like I would love to know, you know, if there's other people, you know, like or, or or any other creatures on different planets. Like even creatures, that would be fucking interesting as hell. Like what if there's just like creature like objects that talk. Or what if there's like plants that talk or plants that don't talk and but everything's you know thriving and alive and has biological function. That shit would be cool. But I don't know. Like people don't like dwelling on the conversation because it's like what well, we don't know. Speaking about it is not even futile. It's just we're just sitting here, you know, swapping theories. Yeah, but you know, there's some theories that do make sense. Gravity's a theory. 
and that shit hella makes sense. It, it, it's just, it, it's just, there's no way that it doesn't. But I don't know. It, it's these are always things that that have. Uh, it, it these are always things that that I've always kind of been interested in. And I'll do a space podcast here and there when there's interesting news. Um, when there's interesting news or anything like that, and mainly just to get your guys' reaction. But anyways, guys, just want to do a quick one, short one. I'll be back uh, in a couple days to do the Friday Fight Talk. Hope you guys have a good one. Be careful with the tax situation. Um, Make sure you do your taxes correctly and watch out. Don't be shocked if you get into a different tax bracket this year because of the changes. Um, Go ahead and... You know what? I am going to link this gentleman just because he, he he's amazing. Um, here, let me see here real quick. I'm going to let you guys know who it is. Um, it's clear value tax. Okay. I'll link him in my, I'll link him in my, in my description and then, uh, get some, get, get some info from this guy before you guys actually start, you know, filing your taxes. This dude has been helping me out for years. Everything that I learn, I learn from him. I do my own taxes. And I'm actually quite knowledgeable on them. On them, on, I know all about credits and things like that. And I'm no tax repairer, but go on over to Clear Value Tax and check out their videos, man. This dude's really fucking knowledgeable, and he understands things. He explains things easily enough for you to understand. There's videos that are so dragged out, and they're explaining some shit, and they don't minimize it to layman's terms, especially when you're not specialized in that field. You don't really know what they're talking about. There's some that's why you're going is to get help. And these videos that cut straight to the chase and give you um, the details that they do give you are actually useful detail. That's clear value tax YouTube page. Honestly, I've been following those dudes for years and honestly, couldn't have been more grateful for them. But anyways, guys, like I said, we'll see you guys on the next one. That's in. That's that. Have a great one.